Hello, this is Mike Mazzalongo. This is the Bible Talk video blog. Today I want to talk about faith. You know, the Christian religion is based on this idea of faith, faith in God, uh, belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, we talk about faithful living and so on and so forth. So many lessons and sermons encourage people to have faith and to, to keep on believing. But many times we neglect to explain how one is to begin to have faith, how one is to cultivate faith. In other words, how do you go from not believing to actually having faith? Well, there are three natural steps to take in order for a person to go from zero to faith. Step number one, believing as true the facts and conclusions that have been presented to you in the Bible. That's the first step. The first step is deciding if you believe as true the information that has been presented to you. Uh, there's a passage in the Bible that talks about this in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse six. It says, and without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And so that's what the Bible study is all about. You know, people have Bible studies, they, they go to studies on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings, or they have Bible studies in home, and that's what it's all about. Reading and processing the information about God and how God has worked throughout history to bring Jesus to earth as a man. It's, it's understanding and making a decision on whether you accept as true the teachings of the Bible about Jesus' life and death and subsequent resurrection and His offer of forgiveness and eternal life to all those who believe in Him. At some point, after having studied about any topic, uh, whatever it is, it could be politics or business or art history, whatever it is, you're reading about information and at some point you have to make up your mind if you believe that this is true or not. If you're studying about China, whatever the author is writing about, uh, that happened in the history of China, at some point your mind makes, up a, a make, you know, makes a decision to, to, to accept as true what the author uh, has written. Well, it's exactly the same thing in Bible study. At some point you have to make up your mind to accept as true or not true the claims that the Bible makes about Jesus Christ. Now, when it comes to salvation, we don't have to understand and accept every single idea contained in the Bible. This uh, is usually a lifetime of work, a lifetime of study and reflection. However, for salvation purposes, the main question to answer is, do I believe as true uh, the, uh, the, the idea or the teaching that Jesus is the Son of God? That's the, that's the main idea that someone has to decide whether they accept as true or not. We have a good example of this, Peter the Apostle, uh, came to this point when Jesus asked him directly. He said, who do you say that I am? And Peter had to make up his mind and describe whether he accepted or rejected the evidence that was before him about Jesus. And we know the answer in Matthew 16, 16, Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so Peter, um, uh, made his decision. And like Peter, we also have to take our first step of faith by accepting as true the claims of the Bible in general, but specifically what it says about Jesus Christ. So that's step number one in our journey uh, from zero to faith. We have to decide, do we believe as true or not the things that the Bible is teaching us, especially about Jesus. Step number two, we have to act on our faith. In the epistle of James, the writer clearly explains the relationship between step one and step two in this process of faith. He says the following, show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works. That's James chapter two, uh, verse 18. And then a little bit later he says, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. James chapter two, verse 26. So when it comes to Christianity, what counts is not just what you believe to be true, what counts is what you actually do because of what you believe uh, is true. And this is the case at every stage of Christian life. For example, at the start, Jesus calls on those who believe in Him 
to repent and be baptized. That's the action that he asks his followers to do if they accept as true his claims. With time, he draws his disciples into service and sacrifice in his name. We, we see that in Acts chapter 13, verse one, where uh, Paul and Barnabas leave uh, Antioch and they go out to uh, preach the gospel. And so faith grows from being an intellectual exercise into a very practical, spiritual lifetime for the believer. So we have two steps. Step one, we accept as true what the Bible teaches about, you know, about religion, about Christ. Step two, we act on our faith and that acting on faith helps us to develop the faith muscle, if you wish. And then step three, step three is trusting God. In biblical languages, the English term faith can, depending on the context, mean several things. For example, it can mean faith as in accepting uh, that something is true. For example, we say, I have faith that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Basically, we're saying, I believe it's true that Jesus rose from the dead. In another instance, we can use the word faith as a body of religious teaching. Again, if someone says to you, uh, what faith are you? Of what faith do you come from? Are you Jewish? Are you Christian? Are you Muslim? Uh, in that context, the word faith means a body of teaching or religious principles. And then again, we can use the word faith as trust. Uh, we can say, I have faith in the sacrifice of Christ to pay for all of my sins. When you use faith in that context, you're saying, I trust, I have confidence uh, in something. In this case, it would be uh, that the sacrifice of Jesus pays for the sins of men. And so to build on our initial decision to believe as true and act upon what the Bible says, we need to add the element of trust that what God has said will actually be realized. It's one thing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but it's quite another to trust that He will provide for our needs each day, according to His promise in the Sermon on the Mount, for example, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, where He says, do not be anxious for your life. And there, what, what is He saying? He's saying, trust me. And so our faith really develops when it goes from believing something is true, to acting upon it, to actually trusting God that He will fulfill all His promises. Learning to trust God is the daily exercise of our faith that builds confidence and joy and peace that the Apostle Paul says surpasses understanding. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. So in the end, from zero to faith requires us first to believe as true what the Bible teaches, especially about Jesus. Number two, act upon the things that Jesus has told us. And thirdly, trust what the Bible says about Jesus and what Jesus promises all of those who put their faith in Him. So that's it for this edition of our video blog. If you'd like to give us some feedback, if you need prayer, if you'd like to organize a Bible study, please contact me, Mike, at BibleTalk.tv. We'll see you next time. God bless you.